see a little bit new ways of being creative, create merchandise, yes, and try to sell fashion in all different mediums that, um, as we will see from 2020, they're going to radically change the way we behave and we experience retail. So um, I would like to introduce to you Peter Jean Ho Shan, yes. if I say that correctly. <laughs> okay. Now Peter um, is an expert uh, in regards to anything related to technology. Now, as we have the conversation, I also have the questionnaire ready. So if there is a possibility that at some point, you know, you get a little bit carried away and you don't really remember what the question was all about, everything is written for you in case you want to make notes. Okay, that will help also the guests to be able to reply to your question faster in case you want to have questions in the end. Okay, now, uh, would you like to give us just a little bit of, a, of an introduction of uh, what you've done so far in, and, you know, what is your technical ability right now where you are a tech person, mm -hmm. yet very important for the new future of fashion as we yeah, see it of happening. Course. So hi everyone. Um, just a bit about my background. background. So traditionally I'm tra training actually in fashion design. So mm -hmm. that is my background, product development. I've worked, I'm actually from London. So I've had clients from the UK. I've also worked out in China. So my, my journey has been an entrepreneurial one actually. I've had my own lab in London called the Daniel Lab, which we look at basically what is the future of retail, what's the future of fashion and how will things like AI, how will things like computers help us in the way we consume fashion, sell fashion, and actually create fashion. Mm -hmm. um, my last project that I did was with the New Western Company who control all of Oxford Street in London. And that was really about how our high streets are for the future going to look like. Um, which now takes me on to this journey now in Paris where I'm looking at AI and specifically how can we use data to drive design, the design process and creativity actually. Can I ask you something, when you were, when you were studying fashion design, mm -hmm. how did you come up to be so obsessed with technology? Because you know, fashion designers traditionally hate yeah. technology because you know, sometimes the automation of the work can be a little bit challenging. So how did that happen for I you? I think it was like a, a natural progression. I knew that with fashion design, obviously there are so many of us being trained to be pure fashion designers mm -hmm. where we can obviously creatively design, draw, make stuff. But I kind of knew that there has to be that next level, you know, and technology is going to, in some way, shape or form, take over. Not necessarily every job, but some part of the job. We're already seeing it already, for example, in the buying process, where a lot of the junior roles are being automated, for mm -hmm. example. And with design and creativity, it's only a matter of time where tech is going to also be automated in some way. Can you explain to us a little bit what is artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. especially when it comes down to fashion? So consciously, it, it isn't you know robots taking over the world, you mm -hmm. know what we see in the movies. Um, but essentially, it is a subset of com sorry machine learning where you train the computer uh, using the subject's data to be able to then spit out output in terms of predictions and recommendations about what the question you want to answer is. Mm -hmm. And um, is it the right time for us to adapt quickly to artificial intelligence, or do you think we are still in baby steps? I think that the fashion industry is slowly becoming more aware and more receptive to AI, mm -hmm. especially within the creative field, but I think we're still actually far behind as an industry. Uh, how do you feel about the luxury industry becoming so widely available, mm -hmm. yet recently becoming technologically savvy? Do you think they're technologically savvy? Well, they start. I mean, you know, if you think about uh, five years ago, the mm -hmm. idea of, of going online, you know, or selling exclusive products online mm -hmm. was unheard of. And now you saw with LVMH, you know, what happens with um, uh, they opening a website, you know, mm -hmm. they, they start having uh, Celine is going to go digital, Dior is going to be sold digital. Mm -hmm. How, why do you think they were so late to adapt while the younger players went quickly? Um, I think, A, it was full of arrogance from the luxury industry, mm -hmm. but also be a very slow in adopting the potential of tech and specifically AI, mm -hmm. um, and how that can really maximize their commercial outputs and their commercial revenue from potential, actually. I think they've only just recently caught up to that, actually, which is a, is a very powerful tool, and they've seen, you know, big players, the small players now coming to be quite big. Um, obviously, last week we saw Farfetch going to their IPO, which is quite 
Can you guess how many hikes take in time for that? <laughs> Eight billion. I mean, Versace is sold for two billion. I mean, this is a little bit insane. <laughs> yeah? Exactly. Like you produce product and you have lower evaluation, and you mm -hmm. produce nothing and you just have a platform to distribute what is already produced by somebody else, and you are evaluated 80 billion. So. Mm -hmm. But I think that's a really good example of where tech has so much potential to be an enabler. That's what tech is essentially. It gives the tools to be able to do something. And Farfetch is a really good example of where it's, they've been able to maximize the platform and maximize AI learning and take that learning and do something that's going to create a connected world, essentially. Is it going to be connected or disconnected? Because to <coughs> me, it looks a bit disconnected. Like it's if I like to wear white jumpers and then I put all my, you know, my preferences, then the only thing I will see in my, in my, in my, you know, in my feed will be white jumpers. Mm -hmm. And then if I ever change my mind and I want to buy a red one, I won't have the possibility to see because all my algorithms, mm -hmm. you know, will bombard me about white. Uh, so. So you're talking from the about the consumer side. Yes, because I think uh, instead of becoming a little bit more democratic, I mm -hmm. think we're becoming a little bit more conservative. So if I like white, I'm doomed to wear white for the rest of my life. <laughs> so. Is that the case or? No, so I think there's still obviously perfection in the algorithms that mm -hmm. they're using and deploying. And obviously you can't remove the human factor, the mm -hmm. emotional factor that obviously on a piece of AI software can't you know, translate. So of course they still have to know that human element. I think what Farfetch is a really good example of is actually the back end operations and obviously that's why they get a better evaluation. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's so possible to get a product from, you know, the outskirts of nowhere that I've never heard of before and that boutique is there and they're mm. selling unique, beautiful items that, you know, once were very difficult to actually communicate exactly. globally. Can I ask you something? Mm -hmm. you, you spoke about creativity and, mm -hmm. and technology and you are extremely positive about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess most of the students here, they've already finished fashion design, if I'm correct, and now you do marketing. So my question is, are we going to substitute the creative designer with data and algorithms and we're going to be able to know that, you know, we have the merchandiser, we know the subject of our sales, you know, mm -hmm. from the previous quarter. So if we sell, I don't know, bomber jackets, we're going to design more bomber jackets. What's the need to have a designer if we can already, mm -hmm. you know, place a program and then produce everything on 3D and stitch it and glue it? And mm -hmm. what do you think? I think that's a really good question. I personally think that every design or designer or design student that comes out of design school should be more open to the fact that actually they need to be aware of new skills that aren't necessarily associated with the design world. Mm -hmm. um, a recent study by McKinsey Consulting Company, though, they were predicting around, you know, 60% of the fashion designer's role is going to be automated in, in some way, shape or form. Um, so if we're thinking about the junior, the bottom end of the role mm -hmm. where you're pretty much doing research, for example, is going to be automated because the algorithm can actually then output that recommendation. So it's then how can you not necessarily replace the designer, but how can the designer and the computer work hand in hand to get more recommendations, mm -hmm. to get new ways of thinking about things? Um, so I, you know, I was once actually really scared of computers too. <laughs> and, you know, I think it's almost those, some of those little paradox things where, for example, take spreadsheets. Designers inherently hate things like spreadsheets mm. because, you know, give them a set of numbers and they can like freak out. And I was, you know, one, one of those people that freaked out at the spreadsheet. But you have to, you know, adapt to what's happening around you. And instead of seeing it as, a, as an enemy, actually, so how can you then embrace it and use it in a positive way? And I, Personally, and I think it's, and I'm actually going to be doing this in my own personal mm -hmm. life, how can we use data um, and the AI and the machines to actually give us new forms of inspiration? Is there a possibility to have inspiration from data? I think so, yes. Yeah. It's about being able to see things in a different way that we couldn't necessarily see with the human eye. So I like to use the example of Nike's recent um, payment that they launched that where their store was created by a computational mm -hmm. design. I think that's a great example of where computational design has done something that you know a human can't actually do to be able to generate the perfect sole for the runner. Or the flying it, which is an incredible, you know, it's engineering and it's half knitwear, half uh, technology. Right. 
Could you give us a couple of examples of very successful merging, merges between creativity and technology from your experience? Especially, you, you live in London, mm -hmm. which is the hub of, of innovation and creativity for many years now. Right. And the great thing about it is they are extremely versatile when it comes to technology, yet they produce some of the best designers of the world. So did you have any experience? Did you, did you have some examples where the design, you know, creative can be also equivalently uh, working well with the tech creative? Because I think your line of work is very creative, so. So, outside of fashion, I think the art world mm -hmm. is going to be quite interesting to look at and how AI is going to be used. But I was speaking to somebody from Google mm -hmm. and we were discussing actually how can the computer create new patterns and forms and necessarily pieces of art in quotation marks from a computer, essentially. So I think then how can we translate that into fashion, actually? If we're thinking about form, or think about pattern and texture and surface design, for example, it would be very interesting to see. And we've seen this actually quite a lot with obviously the, des the dawn of digital printing onto fabric. Yes, it's Marika Tranzi was a very big, yeah. So exactly, yeah. now it's become so easy to digitally print on fabric and how can we take that next step with image making in that regard? I have a little bit of a, of a thought. Mm -hmm. Technically, you can create miracles with technology today. This is undisputable, right? Mm -hmm. The point is there is something about the element of error, the element of mistake. And sometimes from mistakes you do the, the most creative stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that if a digital print was not created by a human, but it was created by a computer, the emotional reaction I would have to the garment or to the print itself, I don't think it will be so immediate. I have a feeling I will be a little bit kind of in a distance. Why? Is that a Because the idea that somebody thought and created something very complicated gives you an emotional attachment. You know, in the case of Catranjo or Prin or uh, Peter Pilotto, you know, they do this incredible, pro I don't know, mm -hmm. before uh, Pucci and uh, uh, Leonard and all these kind of print companies, you know. It was something magical about the idea of finding new techniques to print in various different ways. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it's happening organically, you know, mm -hmm. from printers. But when you now are able to print anything you want on any surface that you want, technically this is incredible, and of course it can open up, you know, all sorts of different avenues. But there is something, there is a glitch on emotionality, I feel. Am I too traditional or... I, I get what you're saying, but I think here, I think the key word here is about nuance, mm -hmm. and it's about finding that fine line between emotion and, and technical and finding perfection at the same time. So obviously, the computer may make errors, but also at the same time, it can be a very perfectionist piece of software as well. So I think, going back to your previous question, that's probably where the design is going to sit in the future is you know, how it's about them creating the nuances and therefore you still have that emotion coming through storytelling, through the inspiration, mm -hmm. through the themes that are being conveyed through a particular collection. I think what's going to be very interesting in the future is you know, what is the role, for example, of the creative director mm -hmm. and how can they use technology to communicate their language um, in a specific way to a brand specific um, value or piece of story. I see a little bit this merge like techno music now. When techno mm -hmm. music was invented in the beginning of the 90s, even though you create the music through computers, there was an emotional element to it. So mm, I feel that maybe fashion, you know, goes towards this. I have a feeling that it's going to go towards this way of mutating as the music industry did. Now, mm -hmm. with your experience, and, you know, of course, you are more into it, what are your predictions? by 2020, what do you think is going to happen? Because already we're moving very, very fast. Mm -hmm. So by 2020 is only two years, but two years today is almost like a decade, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So if there were some predictions or some, you know, oracles that you yeah. could see in the future, what do you think would be of major importance by so the end of this decade? So if by the end of this decade, I do think that we're going to be adopting more, I hope so as well, I'd like yes. to see more data in the way we design and think. For example, I always like to use the analogy of my, one of my good friends that works at Zara, for example, she's on the design team mm -hmm. and you know, her boss is a buyer and she doesn't really have any say in what actually gets designed at all or what gets put into production. Um, so I think by you know, the end of the decade, and hopefully I'd like to see 
designers adopting more commercially driven and more data approaches to mm -hmm. the way they design and really merging of the left brain and the right brain coming together at the end of the day a brand needs to sell and they're making commercially viable collections so it's about how can the designer then change or morph the way that they think to, to, to so it's a little bit of a balance between mm -hmm. creativity yeah. and commerce exactly and of course what is commercial and successful for everybody you know I mean Rick makes 300 million and he's very happy mm -hmm. and I don't know Calvin Klein does 7 billion and they want to do 10 mm -hmm. by 2020 yeah so it's quite, uh, mm -hmm. you know, okay. Mm -hmm.